Hey guys, uh, this is a quick and dirty video of uh, this month's uh, hands-on exercise. Uh, so what are we going to do in this uh, hands-on exercise? Uh, so we start with uh, so we start with uh, an account in GitHub and also an account in Docker Hub. Uh, so GitHub is where all your source files are going to reside, and Docker Hub is where you're going to create your Docker image, and that's where all your Docker images are going to reside. And we are going to create a linkage between the Docker Hub and GitHub uh, so that and whenever we do a commit in GitHub, uh, there is a Docker image uh, that gets triggered uh, and it's it gets built in Docker Hub. Uh, so we start with source code in our local repository, in our local laptop, and then we push this uh, source code to GitHub and then we set it up so that Docker Hub can immediately go ahead and create a Docker image. And then what we do is we take this image and then we run it in uh, an SAP cloud platform, any cloud, pl cloud provider. Uh, in this case, we run it in SAP cloud platform. And what we do next is uh, we make some changes to the source code in, in our laptop and then we push it back to GitHub. And this commit to GitHub is going to trigger a new image. Uh, it's going to build a new Docker image in the Docker Hub. And uh, it's not going to immediately change the image, the container that is running in the cloud provider. Uh, you will have to run a command. And then this latest uh, Docker contain, uh, image gets pushed to the cloud provider. Uh, so fairly simple. Uh, but it does introduce you to a lot of uh, important concepts. So it is a good exercise to learn all the basics about GitHub, Docker Hub, uh, Cloud Foundry, the SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, it's a good uh, learning exercise. OK, uh, without any further ado, let's uh, get into the exercise itself. Uh, so I have, uh, let's see. Uh, so I have my GitHub. I already have a GitHub account. Uh, so if you don't have a GitHub account, uh, go ahead and create a GitHub account. It's free. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new repository in GitHub. So that's where we can store all our source files. Uh, so I'm going to call it monolith. Uh, I'll call it my monolith because I already have a monolith repository. And uh, that's uh, as simple as that. So this will go ahead and create uh, my monolith uh, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, so let's go into our command line and we'll start. Uh, this is where I'm going to have all my source files. Uh, right now, this folder is, uh, this my source folder is empty. So there's nothing in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the source files for this. Uh, so I have a set of commands that I need to run. Uh, so let me go ahead and create a readme file. Okay, so this will create me a readme file. And if I go into my source, there should be a readme file. Uh, I will initialize my local GitHub repository. Okay, so it's initialized an empty Git repository. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the project from last uh, last month, the AWS Docker project. So I will go to. So these are my files from last month. Uh, so if you followed last month's project, uh, we had a, an AWS project, a Docker project. Uh, so I can just simply take that, uh, throw it in here. Yeah, the readme file already exists. I don't want to re replace it. OK, so I have all my source code for my Docker project. Now what I need to do now is go ahead and add all this to the staging area. So git add. So all these files are added to my thing. And I will go ahead and do a commit. And I will also go ahead and push it to my remote, uh, which is my GitHub repository that I just created. And it's called my monolith. Let me go ahead and run 
that. And I will also go ahead and push the, all the files to my master branch. So if all goes well, okay, so it's asking me for my username. Okay, so all the files are now pushed to my GitHub repository. So if I go into my GitHub code, uh, I should see all my files. So this was my first commit. Uh, just a minute ago, I sent all these files here. Now, one thing I want to show is I, I do have Docker installed, but it's not running. So Docker, this laptop does not have Docker running. Uh, I have it installed, but even if you don't have it installed, that's fine. Uh, so I don't have my Docker running. You don't see the Docker icon here. Uh, now let's go into the Docker Hub itself. Uh, and what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and uh, let's go into Create, Create Automated Build. And I have already linked it, so let me unlink it first of all. Let me unlink my GitHub. Uh, so we start from scratch. So there is no linkage between my Docker Hub and my GitHub. And now I want to do a linkage. So I want to go create automated build. I will link my GitHub account. So link GitHub, uh, do a select. Let's do it uh, with read write access. So I have read write access. And let me go ahead and create a new automated build. So create auto build. And I will choose my repository. So this is the new repository that I had created in uh, GitHub. So I will choose this repository here. And I will just call it AWS Docker Project. OK, so it's done. And I want to go into Build Settings. And uh, I want to s make sure that this checkbox is checked. So when active, uh, builds will ha happen automatically on pushes. So anytime I push to GitHub, uh, a build will happen and it will create a Docker image. Uh, so let me go ahead and trigger this. Uh, it may take a couple of minutes to create this Docker image. Uh, but this should go ahead and create me a Docker image. Um, but uh, the cool thing to remember here is I don't have Docker running on my laptop at all. See if it created this uh, latest. Uh, okay, not yet. Um, so I'll be right back, and this should go ahead and create uh, in a couple of minutes. Okay, guys, uh, you can see that it has now created uh, the latest uh, the image on Docker Hub. Uh, so next thing, what we want to do uh, is we want to go ahead and push this to a cloud provider. And for this, we are going to use the SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, so you can sign up for the SAP Cloud Platform account. Uh, I have already done that. Uh, it's fairly simple. You don't need a credit card as well. And you want to go into the Cloud Foundry. And you can see that there are no applications deployed at this moment. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and push this Docker image that was created in Docker Hub, that's stored in Docker Hub. Uh, into the SAP Cloud Platform, so it runs it. So there are a few commands that I need to run. And um, you need to sign up for the SAP Cloud Platform. Like I said, it's uh, simple. You don't need, even need a credit card. Now, if, uh, Cloud Foundry, we are using Cloud Foundry. Um, and we go ahead and set this. Now, the way it is set up is the infrastructure behind the infrastructure provider is either AWS or Microsoft Azure. So uh, this is part of SAP Cloud, SAP's uh, multi-cloud strategy. So if your company is using AWS or Microsoft Azure, you're continuing to use the infrastructure of AWS or Microsoft Azure. Uh, so SAP provides the platform as a service. And you'll see how easy it is to go ahead and uh, run this Docker image. Uh, so you just run this one command. Uh, and this is based on your region. Uh, and then you do a login, CF login. And 
let me log in. And then once I log in, all I have to do is, uh, I think this is called my monolith. Okay. And you push this, this is the command, uh, CF push, and this is the name of your application, so you can give any name you want. And then the Docker image, you're specifying that it is uh, in my monolith and the latest. So uh, you're basically saying, hey, go to Docker, get this image, and run it. And call this my monolith and run it. And you can see that it's uh, getting all these files, it's uh, staging it, it's running it, and as simple as that, and next thing you know, there is um, an application running in SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, so if I go into my SAP Cloud Platform here, and if I refresh, I should see an applic, and this will be my Docker image uh, that it's pulled from the Docker Hub, and it should be running here. And sure enough, it's running here. I can go here, and I can go ahead and make sure that it is running. And that's the link. And this is my project, my AWS project from last week. And I can just put, add uh, append API slash users and voila. So my application is running. Now what I can do is, uh, because this is a trial account, uh, the resources that I have is kind of uh, limited. Uh, so I can change the quota for this application. So I'll just use, uh, say, 128 megs for this application. And I will use only 128. And you will notice that uh, now it's, uh, it goes down, it comes back up, and then when it comes back up, it will uh, only be using 128 uh, megs for this application, because this is a very simple application. Uh, so okay, it's back up, and I will go ahead and make sure it is running, and it is running. Okay, and what I can also do is I can also scale it and run it like uh, I can have multiple instances as well. So I can go ahead and say CF scale. That's the name of my application. And now with this simple command, I can now have four instances of this um, application. Uh, so as simple as that, next thing you know, I will. you can see that there are four instances uh, running as well. Okay, so now what I want to, so, yes, yeah, so you see there are four instances running. Uh, now what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and make some changes to the source file. Uh, so let me go into my source file. I'll open this db.json, and I'm going to add a new entry here. And I have a new entry here. I will add this new entry in my db.json file. And I will go ahead and save it. Hopefully all the indentations are correct. OK, I will save it. Uh, so I now have a new file. I have saved it. And what I'll go ahead and do is uh, I will go ahead and commit all the staged files. And I've modified the JSON, so my comment reflects that as well. And I will go ahead and push this change to the master branch. So I'm pushing the changes to my master branch. Let me provide my username. OK, so let's go ahead and make sure that my master branch has the latest file. So if I go into my GitHub, and if I refresh, I should see, th yeah, so the db.json file has changed. Now, because I pushed a new file into GitHub, now Docker Hub, because they are linked, it's going to go ahead and create a new build for me. So if I go into my dashboard, and if I go into my monolith, and if I go into build details, 
Now, yeah, you can see that it's uh, building, uh, and this is building because we made a new push to the uh, GitHub and uh, Docker Hub is, and I'll be right back. It'll take a couple of seconds. Okay, so the new build is uh, complete, and you can see that it's just a minute ago that it was created, uh, and that was triggered because of the change to the source code. Um, now, this doesn't mean that the image running in the SAP Cloud Platform is the latest. Uh, for that, you still have to go ahead and push the image from Docker Hub uh, to the SAP Cloud Platform. And we know how simple that is. Um, all you have to do is run this one single command, uh, and it's my monolith, because that's the name of my image. Um, so all I have to do is go ahead and push this uh, my monolith, the latest, uh, to um, to the SAP Cloud Platform. So let's go ahead and run this. And it's going to stop all the apps and it's going to run. So you can see that it's uh, there were four instances that we, we had scaled it. Uh, now it's going to run all four. So now all four are running. And let's go ahead and make sure that the changes are now in my SAP Cloud Platform. So if I go ahead and refresh this, now we have up to ID 5. And this one now has ID 6. There's a new entry. This is the new entry I added. And you can see how easy it was to change the source code, create a new image, uh, run it in the SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, I hope you learned um, quite a bit here. Okay, thanks.